So when we're talking about the different types of stability technology, while it's not trying to change the way anybody moves, it can actually make somebody more comfortable and make the shoe more durable for that person who has a more flexible foot. It used to be that you could take a shoe, bend it in half, and figure out whether it's neutral or stability just by that. But that's not the case anymore. Let's take a little bit closer look to the way that stability is changing. So before we look at what's going on now, let's take a little history lesson. The stability category emerged as a way to reduce injury. However, there's no statistical evidence that stability shoes actually do reduce any injuries. In fact, stability shoes aren't meant to change your biomechanics or the way you move at all. Really, what we're looking at is shoes that are going to help to move with you in the best possible way. And that has totally shaken up the stability category. Okay, so why are we even talking about this? Well, stability has changed in that it used to be all about the traditional posting. So what does that mean? Basically, that was the inside of the shoe, the medial part of the shoe, would be boosted up, would have a little bit more firm or dense foam there to help with anybody who put more pressure on the inside of their feet as they move. The thought was, that it was going to help keep them from pushing in on the inside of their foot. For people who do put more pressure on the inside of their foot, it is helpful to have that posting. However, it's not changing the way that they move, it's simply making the shoe more durable for them. When they put pressure on the inside of their foot, that shoe isn't gonna wear out quite as fast because of that posting. But as shoe brands have figured out, that's not the only way that people move. And so that's not the only way that we are seeing stability right Right now. So let's take a look at some of the ways that our brands are doing stability. So first up, we're gonna look at the New Balance 860. This is my favorite example of a traditionally posted shoe. They do have, and you can even kind of see it in there, they're gonna have it be a little bit more firm here on the inside. Somebody who puts more pressure on the inside of their foot is really gonna benefit from having that boosted up posting, that, that more firm, more dense foam there. It's gonna help to make the shoe last last longer because they're not gonna wear out the inside of the shoe quite so quickly. So the 860, great example of that traditional posting that we all know and love. So the next one that we're gonna look at is the Hoka Gaviota. And this one's really cool because they use what's called H-frame technology. So if I could cut this shoe open for you, you would see a frame inside the midsole that kind of looks like the letter H. And really what it's doing is it's providing some reinforcement under the shoe on both sides. So somebody who has a little bit more flexible foot, their foot's moving around some, it's gonna help to just give a little bit more reinforcement under the foot to help make the shoe last longer for them and that's gonna make it more comfortable for them. We've got the Brooks Glycerin GTS. And so the Brooks Glycerin GTS uh, uses guide rail technology. And I love this, I love explaining it to people as bumper bowling for your feet. So you're gonna see these guide rails out here on the outside of the shoe. And really what they help to do is if somebody's got that more flexible foot, it's gonna keep kind of bumping them back to, to neutral bumping them back just a little bit as they go through. So it's gonna help to make the shoe be a little bit more reinforced on both sides so that the shoe can get a little bit more durability, but it's gonna be more comfortable, again, for that person with a little bit more flexible foot. All right, the Saucony Guide 17. This one got people riled up this year when it first came out because the Guide used to be that traditionally posted shoe, but Saucony changed things up on us and the changes are fun. So so what they did is instead of having that traditional posting, we've got this center path technology. What does that mean? Well, the platform is a bit broader on the shoe. The sidewalls are gonna be a little bit higher, allowing the foot to sit down in there a, a little bit more. They also used some asymmetric shaping to help put the foam where it needs to be. Again, we're going for durability. It's gonna help somebody whose foot is a little bit more flexible, who maybe moves a little bit more inside the shoe. It's gonna give them the durability where they need it to help make the shoe last a bit longer. And again, it all comes down to comfort. All right, so then we have the ASICS Gel Kyano 30. And ASICS is using a 4D guidance system as their stability system in this shoe. So what that is, is it's meant to work with the movement of the body, just like we were talking about before. Not meant to correct anything,
anything, but meant to work with the movement of the body. How does that work? Well, they're using what they call adaptive stability. They've got an increased heel bevel, sculpted midsole. The uh, foam on the medial side of the shoe is gonna be a little bit more energetic, and the base is wider. So that's how ASICS is doing stability in this, in the Gel Kayano. 30. So as you can see, the lines between stability shoes and neutral shoes have totally changed, totally shifted over the years, and that's okay. What's important is not way, the different ways that brands are putting stability technology into their shoes, but which shoe is gonna be the best for you. So come visit your local Fleet Feet to sit down with an expert outfitter, get your feet scanned, and see what stability option is going to be the best for you. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow us on our other other social platforms. You'll find us on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, and of course, right here on YouTube.